I had told you these companies are going to cure diseases that have been the scourge uh, of human existence, right? Uh, they're going to cure. They're going to be able to cure pediatric blindness or cancer, as I mentioned before. What is going on, you guys? It is Lincoln here. Welcome to the video. Um, today we're going to be listening and hearing and learning from Kathy Wood, who is the CEO and CIO of ARK Invest. Um, which is one of the most popular um, hedge funds of our period right now. Um, they are very bullish on Tesla and have been for a long time. That's kind of how she's made her mark. Um, she has had 500% returns over the last five years and has absolutely exploded in popularity. And we are going to be listening to what she has to say about the next best opportunities that are out there. Um, and even a sector that is going to outperform Tesla, even though she remains an incredible bull on Tesla. So we're going to hear a little bit about her philosophy, and then we'll dive into her actual positions into some Hello of these stocks. Example. So is stick around. Is that something that concerns you, the consequences of having a bad year? Well, one bad year does not uh, would not worry us at all. Our, our investment time horizon is five years, and uh, we have projections which, uh, which we develop from the top down, trying to understand how technologies are going to scale, and from the bottom up, how companies are going to embrace these new technologies and ride their coattails. And uh, just looking at the portfolios today, this is after the triple digit gain, as you uh, ha have said. Uh, for the next five years, we believe that our uh, returns will compound at an annual rate of uh, something in the low 20% range. And this is in a market where uh, traditional equity returns have been in the 7 to 8% range over time. So we still think there's a, a lot of room uh, or runway ahead uh, because what what we think is not well understood is exponential growth. I think if we uh, step back and look at Amazon in the early 2000s, I remember buying that stock and uh, many people derided that decision because uh, the thought process back then is in the tech and telecom bust, which is, you know, the internet is a figment of Wall Street's imagination. What makes you think Amazon's ever going to make any money? And uh, if if uh, if you did at that time assume that Amazon's revenue growth would compound at a twenty to thirty percent rate for the next twenty years, uh, you would have you would have bought that stock all day long, even if you were using a dividend discount model, right? Uh, I feel like our portfolios are filled with uh, Amazons uh, because the seeds for what we were doing, what we are doing now, they were planted in the tech and telecom bubble, uh, and they have been gestating all this time, and now they're breaking out to those growth trends, just like Amazon did. So the portfolio may not be able to replicate the 500 plus percent gain it's had in the past five years, but it should be based on what you just told me, well over 100 percent. It should double plus in this in the next five years. Yes, we we expect more than a doubling in our portfolios over the next five years. If I look backward, as you well know, Tesla accounts for almost a fifth of the return that you have generated in that five-year time span. Which of your current holdings, Kathy, do you think will supply the biggest lift in the next five years? Tesla is still in the running, but I would have to say the biggest upside surprises are going to come from the genomic space. Uh, and that's because the convergence of DNA sequencing, uh, artificial intelligence, and gene therapies, importantly, CRISPR gene editing, are going to uh, cure disease. That convergence is going to cure disease. Now we have real science and technology surfacing the mutations in our genomic profile. And, um, and uh, as they surface those mutations, what do we see? We see the earliest manifestations of disease. And now, with the combination of artificial intelligence and gene editing, we're able to both anticipate diseases and cure them potentially. Beta thalassemia, we're seeing it, sickle cell disease. We even think it will work in 
uh, diabetes, which is where most uh, the, the if you look at the largest category of spending uh, year to year in healthcare, it's diabetes. If I had told you or any investor in the late 90s that there were going to be three companies with the foundational patents uh, uh, behind CRISPR, Cas9, which is the most advanced uh, gene editing flavor, I'll say, these days. Um, and I had told you these companies are going to cure diseases that have been the scourge uh, of human existence, right? Uh, they're going to cure. They're going to be able to cure pediatric blindness or cancer, as I mentioned before. Uh, my guess in the late 90s, when investors were chasing dreams and too much capital chased too few opportunities too soon, that those three companies the cumul would have accumulated in market cap to roughly 200 to 300 billion dollars in market cap, right? They would have because uh, they'd get a royalty on every therapeutic uh, that was going to be developed. And today we think the recurring revenue base in terms of the therapies just for single gene uh, caused g diseases, we think that's a recurring revenue base of 75 billion. They'd get 10% of that. Single genes are responsible for only 2% of all diseases. That's just the beginning. So the idea of 200 to 300 billion dollars, certainly in the bubble, easy, easy. Uh, today, those three stocks in the market uh, together uh, can't even reach five billion dollars in market cap. Now think about it. Apple is a trillion dollar market cap company and it's changed our lives and we love our Apple uh, phones and AirPods and watches. Um, but the, Apple is not curing cancer. It's not curing disease. Uh, these companies we believe will but there's so much fear in the marketplace and there are all kinds of reasons to avoid them. Uh, the cap is too small, or, and, which is this kind of circular reasoning. The cap is too small or they've just entered human trials. Uh, I'll wait to see what happens. Well, that'll be too late if these human trials are successful. One of the first one being pediatric blindness. A baby born blind, you correct that programming error the baby can see, it works in mice, it works in non-human primates. If it works in human beings, think about how, how, what the reaction will be. Well, we'd prefer to be in the stocks before that reaction. The next fangs are in the genomic age. Uh, and if you'll notice our flagship portfolio, the largest exposure is healthcare for that reason. And so our minimum hurdle rate of return uh, for any stock entering our portfolio is 15% at a compound annual rate over the next five years. So that's the doubling over five years. We're not there yet, but if we were in the low 20s, which is much more than a doubling over five years, but if we started seeing more and more of our stocks lose uh, that uh, return expectation and drop below 15%, we would move back towards some of uh, the FANGs and Microsoft uh, because we would be treating them essentially as cash-like instruments for, for our strategy. So what we do is, uh, as a bull market extends, we we do move into more cash-like uh, equities. Uh, you know, they would be the less volatile stocks, and certainly the FANGs and Microsoft uh, fit that. Uh, and uh, we would do that increasingly. So if you guys don't know about Kathy Wood and ARK Investment, um, it's pretty easy. You go to their page, and they will tell you everything. So most people are concerned with their active ETFs, um, this ARK-K fund, ARK-Q. Um, we talked a lot about the stocks in the ARK G and the ARK K fund, um, so you can click on it, um, kind of see what their what their idea behind the fund is, um, what they're targeting. See their top ten holdings. You can actually see all of their holdings if you click that. So, um, as far as hedge funds and uh, massive investors go, they are very transparent. Um, they put out a lot of white papers about what they're thinking. Um, why they're investing in what, and it's it's super cool. So um, it's a great place to get ideas and just kind of um, 
I guess, learn how they're thinking about their portfolio and their investments and that sort of thing. So I highly recommend you guys checking out their website if you have any questions about anything. I mean, like I said, there's, uh, there's an endless supply of great information here. All right, so here are her top six holdings kind of in this genome space. Um, like she said in the video, she is very bullish on the entire healthcare sector. So I've kind of picked out um, the main pieces from her genome um, part of her portfolio, and it is a substantial portion. So you can see here her top six plays in kind of this genome space uh, makes up just over 36% of her total portfolio of $16 billion. So uh, this number might be slightly outdated. I got this off her third quarter report, so this might be closer to $20 billion now. Um, she has had some massive returns, but you can see uh, kind of the portfolio breakdown uh, regardless. So you can see two over $2.5 billion, over a billion dollars in those top two plays. Um, just a lot of money, and this is not even her entire healthcare um, portfolio. So. I bet healthcare makes up a little bit over 50% of her entire portfolio. So she is very bullish on the space. And of that space, she is very bullish uh, of the genome sector of healthcare. So, um, like she said, I mean, she talked about investing in the cutting edge of technology. Um, she has a five year time horizon. Um, all of these companies uh, represent at least a 15% compound annual growth rate, according to their models. Um, which is why they are invested in them. Um, so, like I said earlier, very different portfolio, very different investment philosophy than somebody like Kevin O'Leary. Most of these companies um, do not have consistent profits, um, if any profits at all. They're still kind of in their infancy stage. Um, but that is just her investment philosophy, and it has panned out extremely well the last five years. Uh, and I'm guessing if she's right about this technology again, then it will work out uh, very well for her in the next five years. So um, I recommend you guys checking out some of these companies, seeing uh, if you might want to throw a little bit of money their way. Um, I'll probably pick one or two stocks from this list and put uh, a couple hundred bucks into each of them. And we'll see. I still like, personally, I still like Kevin O'Leary's philosophy. Um, these types of companies just offer... Uh, obviously, they have very high potential upside, but uh, I like to see more proven businesses, and I'm willing to pay more money to see consistent profits and that sort of thing. So, um, like I said, I probably will take a couple flyers on these. She is obviously very bullish, and uh, I think she is a much smarter individual and a much better investor than I am. So, there's something obviously I can learn from her. So, I hope you guys found this video helpful and uh, if you want to see more like it let me know down in the comments uh, hit the like button subscribe if you are new and i'll see you guys in the next one